Let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome back to your absolutely favorite podcast. Anyways, we're back again, back at it. Wiggy's here still, but he's just a sidekick today. He's behind there. There he is, you know, so we'll talk about that, what y'all thought of that. And uh, I got a lot of stuff to talk about today, I'll tell you about what's going on with the show. I got locked out of my house, American Idol, Ellen, the Golden Globes. We got all kinds of stuff on this uh, jam-packed solo episode, so once again, welcome to I'm here to talk about HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy and fun and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. So welcome back to Riffin' with Griffin. Um, Yeah, big, uh, I don't know, big week. Let me just start with, you know, I'm, I'm trying a new format. I have somebody helping me so it makes it easier for me. So the last episode, I was just introducing you guys to him and I had him talk a lot. There he is. The Wigster, but for the most part, he's just gonna be doing that. He's just, he's there. I'm a, I might ask him some things and he'll pop in, but he's not my co-host. Okay, so I know all you guys that were like, most of the comments were positive in terms of like, I don't even know, uh, whatever. Yeah, there was, you got some negative and positive comments too, yeah, right? Some constructive criticism too. Yeah. yeah. So we got yeah. we listened to your comments and we got it, but just so you know that that wasn't like a regular format of the of the podcast. It's still me doing my thing solo style, as you guys know. And then when I have a guest, he'll still be here even when I have a guest. I, I don't have a guest scheduled just yet, but I will have guests coming and we'll do we'll do it like that. But um, anyways, you know, so thank you, uh, Wigs, for being here again. Of course. Uh, so he's there. So he'll be he'll be he'll be there, guys. He's just behind the scenes, and he'll be there. So, so what's been going on? Um, okay, so let's just start off with a somber, sad subject: is my, 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 the show Bucktown did not get picked up. So that sucks, you know. And it really, I really feel for actually the creator of the show, Emily Wilson. I, I feel for her, and shout out to her because she fought for me and Betsy Thomas, the director and producer, and Sarah Gilbert. You know, from she's on the Connors. She was also one of the producers and. And, and all the people that were a part of the show, it was a really great experience. And it's like, it's terrible because you go through all of this stuff, you know, especially for her. Imagine you're the creator. This is like your heart project. This is like, you know, you, you, you've been, you've been trying to get this made for five years. You know, you, you've written and rewrites and done everything. You went through the process. You got the pilot picked up and then now you film the pilot and then now it's just gone. ABC owns it. They could do whatever they want. They could just shelve it, and that's the end of it. And then now what do you do with all that work and hard work you put in? So I do feel bad for that, but that's the nature of the game. You know, there was um, – they were only going to pick up three pilots, apparently. This is what I was told, and we were number four. So, But anyways, even when people tell you all that stuff, like I don't care about – oh, because it, apparently it tested well. Apparently a lot of things were it was very positive. Everybody was like, oh, this is great. But I'm like, I guess it wasn't because you didn't pick it up. So I don't want to hear none of that bullshit. You know, I'm just that kind of person. I'm like, thank you. Thank you for whatever you have to say, powers that be. You didn't like the show. Or if you did, you would have picked it up. So it is what it is. So that's sad. And I know I went through all this. I put my podcast, my gaming people through the whole process that I was I was doing too because I was like talking about the auditions. I was talking about I'm waiting to hear. Then we finally heard and now we're back here again with this. And it's like it's a, you know, disappointing. But we're going to start it all over again because I have a new audition <laughs> actually for another uh, television show that's coming. That, uh, so I have a new audition that I'm working on. So let's hopefully we start this process again. And that's how you do it. I had my day yesterday where I was sad about it and, you know, I lived with it. You know, it was like, damn, that, you know, it's OK to be like that. When you get bad news or something happens, you know, people come at you like, you know, keep your head up. Things happen for a reason. Ah, shut up. Let me take a day to be sad. 
you know, let me take a day, eat some ice cream, watch the notebook, you know, equivalent to that and like just deal with it. And now today I'm fine. That's how that's how we do it. But yesterday was a mess. I found out about this, uh, the show getting canceled. And then I got locked out of my place. Okay, so I have, you, you know, some people like you can't, you have to lock the door. So I have two locks on my door. The bottom one was one of those ones that if you don't close it, you can, it, you can get locked out. So I go, Rachel needs to get to her. She's going to work. So I have to move my car. So I go before her. I just grab my key, my, my the, the fob, whatever it is, because I don't like having the house keys on that because I, I don't want my pockets full. She knows this. I walk out. I go downstairs. I move the car. She comes down, moves her car. As I pull in, I think to myself, uh-oh, I don't have the house key. I wonder if she thought to unlock the door for me because I do that for her all the time. I just know, okay? Of course she doesn't. So now I'm locked out. I have a Nest, a Nest doorbell that 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 both our phones are connected to. I'm pressing it. I'm sending videos. Hey, what's going on? I'm ringing the doorbell over and over and over again. By the way, at the same time I was streaming online. I was game streaming. I was doing my uh Eric Griffin Gaming, which you can catch every day, Eric Griffin Gaming on Twitch. So the the stream's going on cuz I already t- and I'm playing with my boys Vinny, Brian, I'm playing with them. So I tell them, hold on a second. I'll be right back. So, of course, I don't come right back. And so on their end, they hear the doorbell going, Eric's at the front door. Because I have one of those Google speakers, too. So we know who the, and it recognizes you. So it's going, Eric's at the front door. Eric's at the front door. So now they're on the, ch- the chat. Everybody's laughing at me. Everybody, you know, they're going, they're having a good old time. But then Vinny kind of figures it out. So what he does is he goes on Instagram and DMs Rachel. He, he DMs her. Hey, I think Eric's locked out of the house. She responds like, oh, my God, whatever. Here's my problem. So she don't listen to the notifications of the Nest app, but she can get the, the, the Instagram DMs? Like, what? What's that about, you know? Like, it's so frustrating. <laughs> but of course, she comes home. I'm mad, okay? I even turned my car around so it could face out so when she pulled in, she could see my face and see how mad I was. That's how petty mad I was about the whole damn thing. Even to the point where I was cleaning my car out. <laughs> she's going to listen to this and she's going to laugh. Because I was cleaning my car out. And then I heard the gate open and I heard somebody coming. And I ran so because I thought it was her. Because I wanted to be in the car mad when she pulled in. <laughs> so, you know, and then she was all like, give me a hug. I love you. And I just was like, get away from me. Because I didn't want, you know, when, when you're mad. You don't want to be hugging somebody. You know, I don't want to tell you I love you right now. I'm mad. Now, by the way, I didn't blame her. I don't blame her. I was just irritated by the situation, especially because she had 81 notifications on her phone from the Nest app. I showed her later. She was like, why didn't he hear? And blah, blah, blah. You know, so that was just a nightmare day yesterday. Just a complete nightmare day. You know, so. That's that. So wigs, I got some stuff. Um, I'm uh, ready to talk about uh, on on the things, and and this is how he's gonna help me because he got he he. I tell him the things I want to talk about, and he went and looked it up. So there we go. Oh yeah, good. You got it for me, ready to go. Okay, so first on the list uh, to talk about is like Ellen DeGeneres' show got canceled. She got canceled, but you know now for months people have been talking about how mean she is. This is just constant reports from. Her staff from, you know, ex-staffers, I'm saying, and people that have been around her. All these people are saying all these things about her constantly, like, oh, she, you know. And then like, it's like a, you know, an environment of, you know, toxic environment or what, you know, one of those woke words that people like to use. And so now the, the, the thing got, her show got canceled. But then she finally got interviewed about it in, in this one interview. Look what it says. Ellen DeGeneres says negative press cycle was orchestrated and misogynistic in her first interview. So I think that she believes that, that she was like an attack. And, you know, and I read the article a little bit and I hear her talking about like she's saying to her wife and and like how she, I think she understands why people believe this, you know? Yeah. It's, right? <clears throat> yeah, people definitely uh, probably want to believe it. I think I, I even wanted to believe it. I mean, she, she looks like she could... Uh, she looks like she could be a monster, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you can't. I mean, you can't. not everybody's pretty as you, okay? Sorry. 
you know so it, it, it is what it is you know like she no but you could you could like you could see that uh you could see it so it was e- easily believable yeah so it's like it, you know it just feels like it feels like it's some sort of like you know i can feel i understand how she could feel personally attacked I understand how Ellen could sit there and be like, damn, like it's just because because I because I would like to believe that I, I well, I would bet if I was a betting man, I would say a lot of these people that it is a disgruntled employee situation. And when you, and you have to take everything like that with a grain of salt, people that used to work for her, they used to work for her. So they were fired for a reason. So you would like to think, you know, you'd be like, well, they're just they're adding to it. But then there's so many people that you go, well. You know, is she a nice person? You know, is is it all fake? Yeah, you is think that maybe there's a sliver of truth in there, right? Right, right. And that's what's wrong with like putting these kinds of things out in the press. That's what I don't like about cancel culture and all that kind of stuff in the first place. That's just what I don't like about it. It's like there's like some um some real you know, it, it just it just it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like this is fair to her. But at the same time, I don't know. So now we're all we were never gonna know. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it's like, what are you gonna? You're not gonna. What? She's not gonna go to court. So there's not there's not gonna be a fair trial of exactly. There's figuring no figuring out yeah, what. There's no trial. Yeah. There's no. There's not gonna be any. This is just a court of public opinion in the court in the, in the public one or or whoever created this narrative, uh, whoever like wanted this to go out there. It's it's been it's done. So now it's just done. You know, and there's a lot of stories about it. There's a lot of things about like. You know, that there was producers who were doing, the, you know, inappropriate behavior. And then it's like a lot about her being mean and all these stories about her, you know. But it's like, you know, like one person's version of like this person was mean and another person might be like, well, this person's just a hard ass and wanted things a certain way. And that's why she was successful. So it's hard to tell. Kind of like Jordan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's hard to tell what is what is the the truth in it. It's probably very nuanced. It's probably there's more to it than meets the eye. But unfortunately, the result right now is the public wants results. The shark, there's blood in the water, and the sharks want uh, the sharks are attacking, and that's what happened. And so now Ellen is uh, like 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 actually canceled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's black and white to the people. Yes, it's black and white to the people. There's no gray area, so it's actually canceled. And you know that to me is un fortunate you know what i mean yeah. all right what else we got here wigs we got uh so that was all i want to talk about and another other thing that's going on right now is about the golden globes the golden globes are going on a hiatus um apparently and this is this is weird to me because a few years ago they had the oscars so white like this was a whole thing it was a whole thing about the hollywood is finally addressing their lack of diversity and you could now and then the award shows is where and by the way, and my personal opinion is at the award show is not where you're supposed to be talking about diversity because it is what it is. So if you made all white shows, well, the reward show is about, well, let's recognize about all these white shows we made because these are the shows we made. So which ones were the best? So to me, at the award show is not the time to be talking about diversity, you know, but I understand that this end result is where you start. You go, well, hey, look, can we get different people there? So what does that entail? That's talking about producers and writers and creators. It's talking about what shows get picked up, what shows get made, what movies get made, who's working on the movies. All that stuff is like that's more of the issue that that needs to be fixed, and I feel like they're trying to get to that now. So because this has been such a big deal in the press, because social justice issues and, and racial inequality and all this stuff that people have been talking about now for the past two years really now it's coming to a head where the golden globes they didn't make any changes they didn't try they didn't hire any black people they didn't try anything they just kept it exactly the way it is and so now people are now all these people are like 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 tom cruise apparently gave his golden globe back it's like oh now bitch now you want to act like now you want to act like you're you know you care you know so you, you you know all these people in Hollywood that didn't that, that were a part of this for so many years, you know, reaping the benefits, now that the public is kind of like, "Hey, maybe maybe it shouldn't be like this." Now you want to act like you care? So, I mean, I guess it's better late than never, but it's a little disingenuous to me. It's a little bit like, "Come on, man. You know, how about you start by you're the producer of your movies. 
You know, you produce like Tom Cruise produces his movies. He, you know, he's he's he he's the boss. So at any point in time, he could be like, I want fifty percent women working for me. I want, uh, you know, let's make sure we have at least of everybody that works for me that there's a that that we have a diverse group of people working here. The grips, the staff, the you know, not just the actors because because it's not even about the actors because if you're doing a medieval. If you're doing a medieval Eng- English show, whatever you're doing, I don't want to see Leroy there for no, for no fucking reason but to make people feel good at home. No. Depending on what you're making will depend on like the type of actors you have there. So I'm not I'm not calling for diversity in everything we make. You know what I mean? It's, we can't have a show about the Queen of England and all of a sudden there's a black dude there. Like, wh- where'd he come from? <laughs> <laughs> it, w- it wouldn't even make any sense. Right. So uh, diversity can be from the top down, from production, from creation, all the way up to wherever it is. So it, it's just it's just crazy to me that, like, here we are now, and now this is, like, a, an important issue for everyone. You know, now all of a sudden people are like, hey – I know, I sh- you know, it's like, I guess better late than never. It's like, what do you want? You know, I guess if you're listening to this and you're just like a person that's like, hey, listen, I, you might be at home like, I'm white. I don't hate anybody. And I'm kind of sick of being blamed for everything that my ancestors did. Can I just watch movies and, and enjoy myself? Can I just watch, you know, award shows and be like, hey, did my favorite movie I saw without having to think about, oh, is this, am I being woke right now? Sometimes you just want to like go, hey, I really enjoyed that movie. And then you, you don't, you know, and sometimes you go, I really enjoyed that movie. And you don't take the time to go, man, that movie was all white. You know, if you're a white person, maybe you don't think like that because you just see a good or bad movie, you know? And I think we all want to get to that point. So until we're, until we feel like things are normalized, until we feel like things are like right on track where it's like, all right, there's no more, we don't have to worry about racism anymore. We don't have to worry about prejudice in Hollywood. And maybe when we get to that point, we'll be able to be like, <sighs> we'll be able to breathe a sigh of relief and just watch things and enjoy them. But until that happens, we're still in the midst of like, you know, at any point a cop gets something crazy and we're just reminded once again, oh yeah, the cops have issues with how they deal with minorities. Uh, you know you know what I mean? Then, then you gotta, and then that has to trickle into everything in our life. And I can understand how that could be aggravating to some people. You know what I mean? Like It's like, do you have to be woke 24 hours a day? Some people want to be. Some people, that's your charge. Some people, you've taken that as like your mantle being like, I need to make sure at all times people are aware that there are racial inequalities, there are gender inequalities, that people are not treating each other nicely. If you want to be one of those people, I get you, but I don't necessarily want to be around someone like that all the time. And sometimes you just want to like, can I just watch an award show and and enjoy it? Because the award shows themselves have been ruining it for us anyway with all the politicizing of everything. It's like... They're on the show making some political statement. It's like, hey, bitch, just what? What do you, can you just like tell me which which actor won? Like, I don't need all this because who are you preaching to? You preaching to the choir? Because if the only people watching are just like liberal type progressive people who like live on coasts, yeah. if those are the only people watching the shows, you're preaching to the choir. They already hate Trump. You're right. They already think you know that there's not enough black people in such and such, whatever. They already think that. So who are you talking to right now? All you're doing is alienating the people that you're trying to change. They're not even listening anymore. Imagine if you're at home and you're just like some Joe Schmo white guy, and every time you turn on an award show, they're making you feel like you did something wrong. Well, you're gonna be like this. Change the channel. You just right. You know. I don't know if that's the way to get the message across necessarily. So I don't know what's going on with the Golden Globes. I, I think NBC canceled the Golden Globes, which is like, and I don't think anyone cares. <laughs> <laughs> there, there ain't a motherfucker outside going, oh, my God, they canceled the Golden Globes. What are we going to do? Nobody cares. No one's going to miss it because it's not something that people care about anyway. It actually reminds me of, NFL football in Los Angeles for the last 25 years, we didn't have a team. Nobody cared. The biggest media market in the country, nobody cared that we didn't have an NFL team because it just, we, it, we, we didn't, it, it wasn't something that people in LA 
gravitated to or felt because like a lot of people that come to LA they're from other places so if you're from Chicago you're a Chicago Bears fan so you know you don't care about whatever teams in LA because you don't have you're not you don't live here but times have changed they got an LA team now and so now people are trying to rally around it and you know I feel the same way about like with, with the Golden Globes and stuff not enough people are watching it anyway no one even cares so yeah I mean this is just, right this is Good just riddance. so ridiculous because they have um it says they have what nineteen weeks of reform, and it lists like everything. It's just like this is such bold. Like, what is all this? I know they're trying to like, but but the thing is, it's like because listen, at the same time though, I don't want to I don't want to downplay the importance of because I do think it's important for diversity. I think it's important to make people feel included. Of course, you know I think all that stuff is important, and it's amazing to me that like I feel like the people that run the Golden Globes said to themselves. Is it important? <laughs> you know, are Golden like, Globes is that movies? Is that shows? It's movies, shows. It's it's like it's like a combination of those okay. things in, in 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 the entertainment business. It's like you know, it's the one that like encompasses both. You know, and it's comedy, drama for TV and film. Okay. So you know, yeah, I know the Oscars and I know the Emmys. Yeah, the Emmys are for TV. The Oscars are for they, and then the Golden Globes is kind of a combination okay. of both, and it kind of sets the tone. A lot of times, whoever wins the Golden Globe, you kind of feel like they're on a fast track to win the Oscars. The one that's supposed to be the most, you know, prestigious one. But like with the Golden Globes, you just go like, I feel like they were kind of like, yeah, I know all this stuff is going on. And, and do people really care? And I think they just got their wake up call being like, nah, people do care. And enough like whiny, whiny sort of like woke people are leading the charge. And listen, I'm not saying don't be woke. You know, I think that they're I'm glad they are doing that. I'm just speaking for me. Is like I don't want to be around that person all the time. <laughs> yeah, be woke where it counts. Be work. Thank you. Yeah. See, Wiggy's gonna come in now with just <laughs> little gems like that. He ain't gonna be here all the time, guys. Remember, I said he's you know he's he's behind the desk. He's there for that. He's there to make the show pretty every now and then. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, hope you've been enjoying the episode. But I want to talk to you right now about Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep. You know, I got the Helix Sleep mattress. It's great. You don't got to go to the mattress store anymore. You know, you don't have to like, you know, worry about. Is this the right mattress? Is this going to fit? And then it gets in your place and you don't like it. Helix Sleep, man, they offer this great two-minute sleep quiz. And it's kind of like, you know, it's like e-harmony for your body and your mattress. You know, if you're a side sleeper, a, a light sleeper, if you're, a, you know, your, your back hurts, if you're a heavy set, it matches you and it gives you the best mattress for you. I got the best mattress I've ever had. So take the two-minute sleep quiz. And complete that, and it matches to your body and your sleep preferences. I love that. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. So when you go to their website, make sure you check out all the different mattress models. But take that sleep quiz. I'm telling you, you you're going you're gonna to love it. I took the quiz. Like I said, I'm a side sleeper, so I got the best one for that. Soft, it's comfortable. I love it a lot. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress, and they'll match it to you. And you don't ever need to go to the mattress store again. Just like I said, Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. So must be true, right? I'm saying it. So that's all you really need to hear about. So go to helixsleep.com slash griffin. That's helixsleep.com slash griffin. Once again, guys, take that quiz. And you'll get the best sleep of your life. I guarantee it. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but I'm pretty sure that you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners to helixsleep.com slash griffin. All right? That's helixsleep.com slash griffin. Take that quiz and have the best sleep of your life. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about BetterHelp. You know I do real world advice for a grown ass man. Uh, I'm not a professional. I just like give some common sense advice. And I always say if you have real issues, real problems, some things that you can't overcome, I highly suggest therapy. Therapy doesn't solve your problems. It just helps you organize your thoughts, figure out patterns, help you maybe see why you're feeling the way you feel and maybe you can start to change those feelings. Uh, and, and it's best to be with somebody who is a professional that recognizes those patterns. And that's what you get with uh, better health. A lot of things are interfering with our happiness right now. You know, we 
got still we're dealing with the pandemic we're coming off of that we're trying to get our lives back you know uh, relationships are fractured and people are doing all kinds of stuff that they didn't do before and we're trying to get back to that and maybe you need a little push you need a little help i recommend better help you can start communicating in under 48 hours it's not a crisis line it's not a self-help it's professional counseling and it's done securely online You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly appointments. It's more affordable than traditional offline on offline counseling, meaning going to an office, and financial aid is available. We deal with a lot of stuff, guys. Depression, anxiety, relationship stuff, sleeping, LGBT issues, just you name it. There's a professional out there that you can match with that will help you figure these things out. All right? So... I want you to start living happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash Griffin. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. That's betterhelp.com slash Griffin. That's H-E-L-P, help. Betterhelp.com slash Griffin for 10% off your first month. Start living a better, happier life life today take the step go to betterhelp.com slash griffin let's get back to the show all right so that was uh now let's get to american idol this little story but but before we even get to this story about american idol i want to talk about american idol first wigs um i love american idol i've been watching and this show is just fantastic this year there's like the contestants on this year's show that you guys, I've talked about Willie Spence in the past, and they got this other girl. Man, what is the – man, look up the top seven. Uh, see, this is what I didn't get to do before, guys. Remember, I would have to, like, look on my phone myself because I was like, I'm a one-man show. So now I could be like, tell me the, top, the last seven contestants' names right now in the American Idol uh, uh, thing because these people are so great. Oh, like, that's the chick, too. Like, her, that girl, Grace. Her name's Grace. And, and, and like, I, she – yeah, Casey Bishop. That chick right there, too. Casey Bishop. I think she's going to win. You mark my words. Because she, she's 16. She's beautiful. And she can sing like an angel. And she sings like rock songs. She sings like classic songs. She sings like pop songs. I think she is tailor-made to win American Idol. And she sings just great enough that even though she doesn't sing, say, as heavenly as Willie or even that chick Grace, she's got the other parts of the package it gives her a full a full package of being American Idol, and I'd be totally fine with whoever won American Idol. Now, this last episode of American Idol, not the one that came out yesterday, according to this episode, but the last week's episode, we got Willie, Arthur Gunn's gone, Grace, um, let me see who else, uh, Hunter, that kid's gone, he's gone, Hunter's gone already. There's only like five left, I think. Yeah, five yes, left. It's, it's five. Grace, um, Willie... Chase, um, this the girl I just said, uh, whatever her name is again, Casey. Casey Bishop, and I think there's one other. Oh, and that kid Caleb, he was the other, the fifth yeah. kid. But he's we'll get to him. We're gonna get to him. So, um, so all right. So I'm watching the last, and it was Coldplay week. Okay, Coldplay week, and the dude from Coldplay is there. You know, and he's he's uh, you know he's mentoring the the, and they're all singing a Coldplay song. You know, and Willie. Who's just this? And if you, if Willie's the one he sang Rihanna's Diamonds. It was on YouTube and it went viral. You know, like it, it went viral, and it's got like even when he did it in studio, it's got like twenty seven million views. Like because the, the kid, there he is, Willie. He can sing. I have already talked about how he got to do something about his weight, and I'm speaking of as a, as a big guy myself. We got to get in he because. This dude sings so good, I, I want him to stay alive. You know what I mean? So he's mentoring with the dude from Coldplay, and he sings the guy's song, Yellow. And I'm telling you, it is breathtaking. Like, it, 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 it's so, you get emotional if you're into music the way I am, if you're into singing the way I am. The dude is like such a great singer. But here's what it made me think about. And this is what I wanted to talk about on the podcast about being an artist. What is being an artist? Because what I realized is the dude from Coldplay, he is not as good a singer as Willie. Willie's instrument is fantastic. But the dude from Coldplay, this motherfucker know how to write a song. 
And that's what makes him an artist. And that's why he is the dude, the Coldplay. Okay? Because that song, Yellow, is a beautiful song. And the way Willie sung it, you go, oh, man, if, Will- if this was Willie's song, man, this would be a hit. And then I realized it ain't his song. And then I went and listened to some of Willie's songs that he his some of his original songs. They ain't that good. And I go, oh. And so when they always talk about the judges on America, they're always talking about like who, what kind of artist are you going to be? It's also to me about songwriting. It's about like or having that relationship with whoever you, the songwriter is. But that really is the true art when you can combine the songwriting with whatever the talent level is, no matter what level the talent is, it has to have a basic, has to have a basic level of greatness though. You know what I mean? But when you add the talent of being able to write a really great song, combination with a great instrument, that voice, it really creates magic. And the voice don't even have to be as great as it could be, like the guy from Coldplay who can sing great. He's a great singer. You know what I mean? But like this dude Willie sung his song in a way that I go, damn. But I have to remember that ain't his song. So it's a question I put out to you, uh, my listeners and viewers about like, you know, what do you think being an artist is? Because that's what I think being an artist is now after witnessing this. Because I really, like I said, just because, you know what? And I can relate it to comedy. Being a great performer versus being a great writer. Like, for me, I know I'm a great performer. I know that I have a boisterous voice, I have a big personality, I have a big demeanor on stage, and I act things out, and I can sing, and I can... So I'm very much like this animated figure that is very entertaining. Now, I have moments where I have some jokes I'm proud of, and I know that, like, and I know that when I hit those moments, those are the moments that my peers come at to me with more than anything else. Loved that joke. When you get that compliment, like, oh, that was a great joke. That's the artistry. So like some of the great comics you have right now, you know, it's like Chappelle has a combination of all these things. He's such a great orator. You know, he really, his voice presentation, how he says things, that's part of the instrument. But the subject matter combined with that is where it forms the artistry and the thing that we gravitate towards the most. That's the thing that we go, oh man, that's what makes that person great. So I really started to think about this after watching American Idol and seeing the Coldplay week and just realizing actually how fantastic Coldplay is, the guy Chris, whatever his name is, as an artist. Because it just was a fantastic, uh, he's got fantastic songs. And to hear other people sing them, you go, oh man, this is really, you know, you know what I mean? So now I also get why, like, the people that write the songs, why they make the most money. <laughs> you know, like the publishing rights or whoever wrote the song that has the rights to the song, that's the art right there. You know, that's really the foundation of the art. So, but anyways, so American Idol's going. So this one kid that's on American Idol, his name's Caleb. He's 16. All right. And he got in trouble because. So here's a story. If you're looking on YouTube, it says American Idol finalist Caleb Kennedy out after KKK style hood video surfaces. Now, I saw the video and I can't tell if this is like doctored or not. You know, like here, like because apparently people have been adding things to the video. So here's the video right now. And he's like, it's a Snapchat video and he's standing, sitting next to somebody. And the dude's got like, you know, a KKK looking hood on. And then he comes out with this like well-written apology that I know he didn't write. He's 16 years old, even though the kid writes his own music, but I just don't think that he came out with this, this worded, this wordy ass, like, you know, uh, you know, apology that, that one of those kind of apologies that, you know, it feels like somebody in the press wrote it for you so you can make everybody feel good about what's happening. So, and you can see, he's, you know, he's like, hey, y'all, this is going to be a bit of a surprise, but I'm no longer going to be on American Idol. There was a video that surfaced on the internet, and it displayed actions that were not meant to be taken in that way. I was younger and did not think about the actions, but that's not an excuse. I want to say sorry to all my fans and everyone who I have let down. Like It's like, so it just goes blah, blah, on and on and on. Now, let me just talk about how I feel about this. Now, again, you look at the video, and... They can say whatever they want. It, it doesn't look good in terms of like if you were somebody that's like, hey, that looks 
like clan. The kid's a country singer. They're from I'm not even sure where they're from, but they're from a place that like you know it's you know country white guys. And when you see a hood like that, you go, well, this guy be racist, right? That's just your where your thoughts go. No matter what they were doing, like I don't like I don't know the context of why that happened because I because I have a whole lot to say about this. Because the first thing is let's just talk about this. Yo, not everything goes on the internet. Like not everything should go on the internet. Is what we're learning right now. Well, because what we're learning is people are digging up your past. And they're taking like chunks of it, little bits of it, and then they're they're making your whole character is based off now this one moment from an internet post. So if we know people think like that, if we know people are this this much this stupid and this idiotic and this close minded and this so willing to like cancel people, if we know people feel like this, we gotta start rethinking what we put on the internet. And that sucks too, because it was supposed to be this fun place that we can share ideas and say things and make jokes and all the things that we've been doing. But now these things are being turned and used against us to make these virtual signaling fucks feel good about themselves. So here we are. Because I have a problem now with, a, first of all, the kid is 16. He's 16 years old, okay? He ain't, his mind ain't even developed to the point yet where he can... Who, Whoever he is as a person has not been decided yet. Now, let's even go back. This video was made when he was 12. He's 12 years old. Even if he was around people who hate black people and they're racist and they're in the Klan, he's 12. You think he has the choice to be like, hey, guys, I don't want to be around this. <laughs> you know, it's like, so if we're really going to get mad at people, it should be his parents. It should be his guardians. Hit the people, his community, the people that he's around when he was a kid, to be like, yo. But I don't know if this was that. We don't, we don't know if this, if this was really that. They, they could have been, they could have been capturing somebody making a bad joke. They could have been capturing like it was something else. I don't know, and that's what they're claiming. It was like a Halloween or whatever it was. It's like we don't know what was going on, but now we're putting the weight of the racial world on a 16-year-old's shoulder saying, hey, when you were 12, you should have known better. Hey, look at me. Shut the fuck up. That's how I feel about that. Because now, for the rest of this poor kid's life, they're going to look him up when he's trying to be a singer because he's going to be a singer. Okay? They're going to be like, oh, that's the kid with the KKK Snapchat video. And now, now he's, are you happy? Because that's what I want to ask you people out there. Are you happy? Is that what you wanted? Are you happy with yourself that you canceled a 12-year-old kid? Are you happy? So the 12-year-old kid has been canceled. And what did it do for racial injustice? What did it do? Nothing. It did nothing. Because the real issues that we should be talking about is like, one, putting things on the internet now. Uh, two, like, you know, hey, parents. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to have your kid be in race, like, even if you're, even I'm talking even to you racist people. If you're out there watching my podcast, and I don't know why you'd be watching my podcast if you're racist, but you, maybe you'd like want to check and see what the other side's doing, you know? But even if you're, ra- if you're racist and, you're, and your kid's a, a great singer at 12 and you know he's a singer, singer at 12 and he's going to be around the other part of the world that don't get your beliefs, you got to know that you're going to put him in an environment where this stuff is going to come back to bite him, whether you like it or not, you know, whether it's your choice or not. So, you know, you, you know, it's like when in Rome, you do with Rome, right? That's what it is. So when in regular society where people don't hate people for the color of their skin, if you're going to be living with us, you're going to have to abide by certain rules and regulations. So as a parent, even, even you racist parents, you got to be like, well, my kid's a good singer, so he might have to get a record deal. And then, you know, those people, we have to appease. The, you, you, be smart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even you should be smart. So I don't blame this kid at all. I, I just don't, I don't blame this kid. And I know there's people out there, because I was talking about this in my stream, and people were like, well, my kid knows better. I'm like, shut up. You mean, you think to tell me that a 12-year-old is going to be able to think about global issues, uh, about race and, and, and all the stuff that's going on? We would, like to, we would like to think that they think about these things, and we're going to put it, we're going to present it to them, we're going to talk to them about it. But f- to act like it's his fault, to act like he should somehow... Be responsible for the actions of the people around him at 12 is ridiculous. Right. That's what I have to say about that, Wiggs. Big facts. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, 12-year-olds you know. getting canceled. 
Yeah, really yeah. Well well, he's 16, me. but we really canceled the 12 year old right, him. Exactly. We yeah. canceled the 12 year old him, yeah. and we and we're making the 16 year old. We're punishing the 16 year old for 12 year old him. Where what choice did he have? You know, was it even his video? I don't even know if it was his Snapchat. And if he had a Snapchat at 12, putting you know, ugh, whatever. You know what? I'm not gonna harp on it. We're 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 done with that. Okay. We're we're just. Amen. <laughs> Playoffs. Yeah, I think. Uh, I, yeah, I think I should. Let's go into uh, the the NBA playoffs. So I'm I'm excited about the NBA playoffs because they got this new stupid playing game, playing tournament that they're doing right now. They got the playing tournament. Not a huge fan of the playing tournament for. And I saw Kenny Smith talk about this on TNT. The seventh seed should not be in the playing tournament. If it was up to me, because the seventh seed, they're like seven or eight games above five hundred. That's a great season. You're having a great season, so you ha- you now you're going to get kicked out of the playoffs with somebody who don't even got a a five hundred record because they had this stupid playing thing. Like I get the idea of incentivizing the players to make them like because this is the most exciting. Like a tenth seed, all of a sudden is playing like they have something to play for so that is good for the fans and I get the purpose of it but I don't think that the seven seed should be involved in that but this is what I would do I would say this if the seventh seed is 500 or less record then they're in the playing tournament but if they're above 500 then they are excluded from the playing tournament that's what I think they should do I think that's what it should be it's like you know so even if the eighth seed so they you, you want to be out of the eighth seed okay so it should be eight, nine, and ten. You know what I mean? And because I because I don't like the fact that like the seventh seed will, is playing the tenth seed, right? Then they move on, and then the eighth seed is playing the ninth seed, and then they move on. So I, I feel like the seventh seed is completely getting messed up by just a one game do or die, and I think that's messed up. So right now the Lakers. Because of LeBron James injuries and uh, uh, what's his name, Anthony Davis's injuries, they are, have themselves right now in the seventh seed. But actually, the seventh seed ain't too bad because my Clippers are in the third seed. So if if so, in the beginning of the playoffs, one plays eight, two plays seven, three plays six. So. You don't, I don't know if, if I were the Lakers, if I would want to play the Clippers in the first round. And if I'm the Clippers, I don't know if I want to play the Lakers in the first round. I don't like that's the Western Conference Finals that we wanted to see last year. So I don't know, uh, you know. So I, so I think that the Lakers match up better against Phoenix and Utah, who were the number one and number two seed. And imagine, man, that imagine you're the Utah. You've been busting your ass all year. You have the number one seed, and you might pull the Lakers in the first round. LeBron James and Anthony Davis, who are ready after coming off injury, you're going to play them in the first round? The first round? Oh, it's, it's, these playoffs are going to be these playoffs are going to be fantastic. I, I I think you know. Then on the eastern side, you know, you still have. I talked about this earlier on in the season on the podcast about the Nets, and it looks like they're getting it together. But I still maintain. I haven't seen James Harden do it in the playoffs yet, so we'll see. And Kevin Durant, as good as we all say he is, when it's just him and Kyrie Irving, they don't have a good record. They don't have the record that they have when it's just James Harden or James Harden and one of them. So to me, it feels like James Harden is the most important player on that team. But they all have not proven that they can do it without so-and-so. So Kyrie, it was he, he did it with LeBron James. But before that, Cleveland wasn't even making the playoffs. He's not the kind of player that is going to take a team by himself and make him great. When he went to Boston, the chemistry was all off. When he first went to the Nets by himself, the chemistry was all off. The teams were better without him. So now he has that guy again. He has two of those guys. He got Kevin Durant. He got um, James Harden. Okay, in terms of James Harden, we know he's great. MVP caliber player, one of the best scorers in NBA history. He, he hasn't proven it in the playoffs. Even though they missed 27 or 28 three-pointers in a game seven against Golden State with Kevin Durant, they could have won the championship that year against arguably one of the greatest teams put together ever, right? So James Harden has it in him. 
He just didn't finish the job. He hasn't finished it off in the playoffs. So hopefully this is the year that he goes, you know what? I got to fucking finish it in the playoffs. So this might be his year, right? And then in terms of Kevin Durant, I'm sorry. To me, the jury's still out. The jury's still in on him. You know, I don't know how, if you say that term right, I never know if, you, if I'm saying it right. The jury's out or the jury's in. Either way, when he was with Oklahoma City, he didn't get past LeBron James when it was just him and, and Russell Westbrook. Okay. And then when it was him in the Western Conference Finals against Golden State, two of those final important games, he did not play well. He was like seven for 30 or something like that in like two of those games that they needed them to win. They were up 3 1 and choked it away to Golden State. All right. And then he leaves that team and joins Golden State. Yeah, he's going to be great. You know what I mean? So I don't even count those years. I don't count those years to show as an example of his greatness. This is the year that will show if he's great or not. Can he be the 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 foundation? But hey, don't be surprised if they win the championship and it's James Harden that wins the MVP of the finals. And again, that's going that's going to show a lot. So it's exciting because then you also have the Sixers. I love the Sixers. I think with Doc, I think Doc Rivers is a great coach and he's always good in the first three or four years being with people because they really listen to him in his voice. If they he'll lose them later and they'll get fired. Excuse me, but for now. He's got, yeah, let's see the records. Yeah, he's got them with the number one. Even with Brooklyn, as great as they've been playing, the, 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 uh, Philadelphia 76ers got the number one seed. And then you got the Bucks with Giannis. They're playing great. The additions that they made to their team. You got the surprise Knicks. But all these other teams that don't matter. There's only four teams to me that really have a chance to go to the championship. And that's Philly, Nets, Bucks, and Heat. And the Heat, they are surging right now. And the reason why I say the Heat is because they were in the finals last year. They got that moxie. They got that thing. They want to prove themselves again. They got Pat Riley running that organization. They got that, uh, what's his name? Um, what's the coach's name from Miami? Um, Eric Spolstra. And they got Eric Spolstra uh, as the coach. So, you know, look out for Miami too. So I think that's great. And then in the West, it can, you know, in the West, ultimately, I think it's the Lakers, the Clippers. I mean, it could be any of those guys. I think Lakers, Clippers, Phoenix are the ones they really have. A legit shot. I, I don't know if Dallas is ready. Who knows if Porzingis can stay healthy. Uh, the rest of these teams, like, whatever. Like, San Antonio got no shot. Like, like get them out. I wish New Orleans would get their shit together. But, they, you know, we would like to have seen uh, Zion be in the playoffs. But it's not going to happen. You know, Memphis, they, they got a great young team. I love Ja, ja Morant. That dude is a beast. And then Golden State. Like, Golden State got that championship pedigree. But are they ready? So, like, this is like, man. You're talking about Lakers playing Golden State in this playing game? Like, that could be fantastic, you know? Steph Curry's playing the best of his career right now. People keep saying, is he the best player in the league? That's how great he's playing. People think he's the best player in the league. So, you know, that's something to uh, that's something to think about. So, I am excited for the NBA playoffs. So, make sure you guys uh, check, check that out. If you're into the playoffs, you know, check that out. So, yeah. So, anyways, that's it. NBA playoffs. So, now... So, look, this is the format of the podcast. Look, it's me doing my solo stuff. But now we have uh, Wiggy's Corner. <laughs> so he bringing some stuff to the podcast right now that uh, yes, sir. That, that he wanted to me to, like, do some stuff. And so, and here we are, I you know, figured, uh, 42 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that let's, uh, let's get Griffin reacts to some TikToks and uh, maybe play a GeoGuessr or something. Yeah, that, I got it. Let's do it. Um, so TikTok reactions, we need to come up with some kind of thing. TikTok reactions, you know. Okay. Uh, TikTok reactions. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, hey guys, once again, I'm here to talk to you about Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips. You guys know I cook on Instagram, and that's one of the main things that I love about a place like Hello Fresh. Because if they give you all the ingredients that you need for the meal that you're about to cook, and you don't have to stress about, do I have this? Do I have that? Do I have enough of this? Enough of that? They tell you everything you need. It's it's easy to follow, and it's fun to do. It's a fun cooking experience. Try, try meals ready in 20 minutes or less, lightning prep recipes, and quick breakfasts and lunches. Perfect for your busy schedule. So, And you're making your own food, and it's healthier for you. HelloFresh's ingredients are sourced directly from growers and delivered from the farm to your front during under a week contact free of course hello fresh has been named newsweek's most trusted meal kit 
company of 2021 and over 4 million households served. Get better value. HelloFresh is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than restaurants, meals without sacrificing the quality. And that's the thing I want to say the most, all right? Uh, you know, share, like, like when you have like two or three people in your place, it's just me and Rachel here. So like, I love to just cook for the both of us and the portions are great. That's the thing that's great about those things too. You know, you're not overcooking, you're not undercooking, you're making a just right portion and it's just healthier. You're gonna you're gonna feel better, you're gonna lose weight. And that's the the, the best part about these meal plans, man. These, these, you know, these meal kits. So I really highly recommend it. Go to hellofresh.com slash 12, one, two, the number one, two, HelloFresh.com slash 12 Griffin and use code 12 Griffin for 12 free meals, including free shipping. You guys hear what I said? That's HelloFresh.com slash Griffin, 12 Griffin, and use code 12 Griffin for 12 meals, including free shipping. Woo! I don't know what else to say about that. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 12 Griffin. Let's get back to the show. All right, we're back. All right, green okay. screening. They're not green screening, but we're like tick TikToking. I'm, I'm TikTok. Let me see what's this one about. <laughs> this is the first one. one uh well don't i get to react to that one what's yeah. the <laughs> yeah 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 react to that one. what do you think about that one? well I, I mean yeah she got a, a big ass booty <laughs> oh my god anytime you see a white girl with like a booty like that it's always that that that's that's always a thing you can ask any white girl like that like anytime you see a white girl with a big booty you go do a lot of black guys hit on you and they always do the same thing they go oh my god all the time <laughs> like, and then but that, the, that, that was one white funny. guy yeah, there's always yeah, there's always the one white guy. All okay, right. this I thought was crazy because it's just it's true. Like if you look at this, um, you'll like. He, he, I'll just let you see it. But this video has no sound. Apparently, every time the elephant hits the seesaw, people hear a thump. So what I need you to do is turn your volume all the way. Do you like feel it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can feel like a little rumble. Yeah. It's I, almost like your, your mind is telling you. Exactly. It's supposed to. All right. Let's, oh, wow. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's, that's kind of freaky. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Okay, this I thought is this, was. Is this you? No. <laughs> uh, but uh, this guy's this kid's pretty funny. How much is that item? $5. Okay, well, what I can do for you is instead of $5 cash, I can offer you this mystery box. Basically, the value of this could be huge. It may not be huge. Well, I think you're underestimating the powers of the mystery box. No, I'm not interested. All right, well, let's at least see what you missed out on. All right. You could have had, you could have had 1,500 cash. <laughs> I could have, couldn't I? You could have. <laughs> Never underestimate my box. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, you slick piece of shit. See, he, you know what? He wouldn't have got me because I would have said, yeah, what's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? You yeah. know, but what a, what a smug. That's, that's such a, like, he just went to like some dude that he knew would be like, I ain't taking your box. Of course. And he got him. But that's, uh, you know, it, that's what it's like. That's like one of those game shows where it's like, let's make a deal. You know, where you go, do you want, do you want this $50 cash or do you want to see what's behind curtain number four? Yeah. And then it's like a, you know, lamb shit. You know what I mean? And you're like, damn it. I want the $50 back. I can't, what am I supposed to do with lamb shit? But that guy got him. That's yeah, a good he one. Got him. That was pretty funny. I wonder if he does that. I wonder if that guy does that kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does like tons of those oh. little stories. We'll, we'll, we'll have to start following him. Okay, this. Uh, I thought you guys could vote if I should do if I should try this or not. The magic removal cream. <laughs> yeah. to get Since my last video got deleted, I'm gonna show you how to remove a tattoo. You would need salt. Rub the salt in, real good. Then you get cocoa butter. Uh, roll the cocoa butter on there good on the spot where you want the tattoo removed. Uh huh. Add more salt with 
With the cocoa butter, rub it on it good. Do that for three days out the week. <laughs> now, three weeks of doing this, you can see it's fading away. Just do that four times a week for three weeks, and as you can see, it fade away. Free game. Let's go share this, man. Free game. Wow. So I wonder. I mean, four weeks, three times a, a week. Like, if you have the patience and the wherewithal to do that, I guess if it works, it works. <laughs> I, I test the, it the, out on one of my small ones. I just don't know. Like, is that doing anything to the, the person's skin? Is it that safe? That can't be good for your skin, right? Right. Yeah. Salt and cocoa butter. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. That sounds like something you put on some ribs or something like that. I don't know <laughs> if it's like a, a recipe at a soul food restaurant. Yeah, I, I'm gonna need a factor cap on that one. Like yeah. Well, someone to test it. Well, you test it. Just yeah, pick guess, one of your like I, dumb ones. I could, I could do this little heart. <laughs> Or something. Yeah. See if it works. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to keep track of it. Yeah, I'll come back and see. All if, right. What uh, else we got? Um. Okay. Well, there's this YouTuber that got caught up. They did a little, um, a little uh, Chris Hansen action on this YouTuber guy. He was talking to underage girls, and um, and this is actually the game that I'm about to have you play. It's called GeoGuessr. Um, and he's playing it, and he got put. He got put where they confronted. The, uh, <laughs> that guy, that YouTuber, and somehow he uh, guessed. Why does this alleyway look so familiar? <laughs> this too. No way. <laughs> this is where EDP was confronted, I'm pretty sure. It's in Bakersfield. Uh, that's the game you're gonna play. Oh well, that's terrible. So he, <laughs> so it, wait, so that YouTuber was on the show, the Chris Hansen show, or no? They they did like a, uh, they did a uh, like a, a fake like a a YouTube version like sting operation. Oh, to catch him and um, and did it work? Did they catch? Yeah, him? they caught him. That's well, that was that video. Yeah, that video was him being caught. At that location. So the location that the game sent that guy to was the location that they caught him. Wait, um, wait. So it wasn't the guy we were watching. No, it was the. It was the guy that was walking. So you confused me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not that Why guy. Is no, it's it's uh this guy. Oh, it's okay. That guy. That, He's a that's, YouTuber. Yeah, that's where he walks after they catch him because they catch they have it all on like a uh, little secret camera oh so it's gotcha. like a, it's like a gotcha like oh so he's the guy that got him yeah okay oh, oh gotcha guys yeah, okay yeah. okay see now you make it sense now okay. okay so now wait wait let me let me tell the viewers and the listeners because you just confused the shit out of everybody right yeah, now I know I did. so the video we were watching is a video of a guy who knew about where another youtube video person caught that guy in the video escaping after being set up Trying to meet with underage girls. Exactly. Boom. See how I yeah, explained it? Yeah. People, uh, uh, some of you guys probably will know about that situation. I don't know if my viewers will, but, news, but you know. <laughs> some of them might. But um, okay, right. then, then uh, this is the last one and then we'll play the game. Um, this is just, I just thought this was tight. This guy's killing it. All right, let's see. I put the new forges on the chain. I trap and tell them, let it bounce his underneath. That's a song I was singing earlier. <laughs> so, oh, so he created some like uh, return basketball thing? Yeah, he's just got the you know the homemade hoop set up. Oh, that's I great! Was sick. Thought he was killing it. Um, and where's he from? He looks like he's from some backwater. Yeah, somewhere out in the south, probably. Um, but yeah, are you, I wanted to know: Are you good at Are you good at basketball? I used to be when I was a kid. Because I know uh, where's my pi oh where's my picture. Yeah, but I have a picture of myself. Because I know uh, Mon Montez rebound. was supposed to be pretty, <laughs> pretty fire. Man, I, I almost hurt myself filming that episode. Uh, that little like, uh, what was it? It was the 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 other cubicle. That's what it was called. It was an online, just an online version called the other cubicle. And uh, we, uh, I had to like, it was about I, I was telling Jets that I could dunk, so I w I went outside and like. They kept lowering the rim till I could dunk, you know, and I just and I had to do it like a bunch of times where I, afterwards I was done. I was like, damn, I might have hurt myself, you know, you so days are done. But it was it was fun. That was a fun. That was a fun shooting that. I bet. 
Okay. All right, so what's this crazy game you got me playing here? Okay, so, so it's um, so if you're listening on the audio, you're gonna have to listen to watch the video to see like did this. Uh, I'll try to describe it as we go, so we can like remember that. Some people, people might know what it is it's called GeoGuessr. GeoGuessr, and this is like you're gonna show me a place, and I have to guess where I'm at. Yeah, it it puts you anywhere in the world, and uh, you got to guess based off of the Google Street View. The Google Street View, yeah. got it. All right, GeoGuessing for Google Street View. Here we go. He's setting it up right now. See, this is all the fun. These are all the fun things we're doing with uh, <laughs> Riffin with Wig. Um, okay, so here we are. It doesn't tell you where we are, but uh, so I have to just guess where we are. Yeah. So there's lots of little things that you can. That all you right. So use. it looks like we're, it looks like a hospital. Uh, Sigma something or other. I don't know what that is. Sigma Aldrich. It looks like it says. Uh, I have no idea where this is. Like, how would I know where this is? I don't know. I don't know. I, this this is well, wow. This this is an impossible <laughs> game. How can anyone? Some people are really good at it. Oh, man, I guess you have to be well traveled in weird areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this looks okay. There's like a water tower. This looks like I'm in Verdansk in uh, Call of Duty. Um, I have no idea where this is. There's like a water tower. There's a fountain. There's like it looks like a hospital. It looks like there's a barn with like you know a a silo full of grains. It's mean, like, like I don't know. I'd have to guess like Sweden or something. Oh, you think it's a, oh, oh because of the cars? Oh, I didn't even think to look at the cars. The, the mountains. No, but look at the cars though. You would know if you could see like you know. Oh, this does look like someplace in Europe. It's yeah, you're right. It's got to be Europe, right? Yeah. But, but so where? In but Europe. where in yeah. Europe? Who knows? All right. Well, you made a guess. Let's say Denmark. Yeah, I'd say I'd say somewhere over there. All right. Where is it? Uh, no, it doesn't tell you where it is. It doesn't show you the. Oh, it does, but after you got to guess first. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, so you have to guess. Okay, okay I get so... it. So we're guessing. I'm gonna guess. Uh, is there somewhere over here? I don't. I don't know. Is it Sweden? <laughs> okay, not too far. See. Where was it? Ger- Germany, Italy, Austria. Oh, it was Switzerland. It was in Switzerland. Oh wow! Look at okay. us. Okay, I get it. All yeah, right. So, so we were. So you just picked a city. You don't necessarily have to pick like the exact like it's like you know. Well, you can get as close as you possibly want. Some oh, okay. people like uh, like on that that EDP one, the dude that the one that I showed you, um, right? He uh, he got it like within a mile somehow. Oh he shit! Knew the exact location. I've been like within like I don't know, like a hundred miles or something. Oh wow, that's pretty good. This the next one? Yeah, this the next one. Oh man. Okay. Oh, put us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this one's gonna be. Oh, tough. this is like a. It's just like a country road with like greenery on either side. Yeah, I'm gonna say Missouri. Let's see if we can find a. a oh, you, oh, you a can keep going or something. Oh, oh, yeah, it's guy. I mean, this could be Florida, but I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm feeling like this is someplace in in the, in the states. Yeah, it's got. It's got to be states, right? And I think that it is. I'm gonna say Missouri. Let's check. I could see Missouri. I could see Missouri, someplace in Missouri. Right. Who knows? God, it's just like a weird looking road. Let's put, yeah, I'll put it right near camp. No, no, I'll put it closer. Yeah, more let's in see. The, more in the rural area. Yeah, closer to, I don't know. Let's go. Hey, look. Look at that. See, I'm pretty good at this. That's actually pretty close. How far away is that? Okay, so we were. Cl- it was near Cedar Rapids, Iowa. That's where ah. my that's where my dad grew up. Oh wow! Look at that! Look at that! Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I think we got. Look at me, world traveler. <laughs> um, all right, this one looks like. Oh, okay. Um, this okay. This one looks looks uh, like some projects. You know, oh, uh, weird writing on the walls. That's, that's Russian, right? Yeah, it looks like yeah, it's got to be someplace. Yeah, that's that's yeah, Yugoslavia. Oh, wow, wow, something look at like this. that. Look at this parking lot. Right? I know, this looks like a weird sort of. I didn't even know Google Maps went to places like I this. I know, right? This is they like, could just drive around anywhere. You know, that's that's if you were like a spy. CIA, the CIA dress up as a Google Maps. Yeah, driver. you dress up as a Google Maps driver, and that's how you would like spy Nobody on people. Nobody would even question you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is someplace in Russia. Yeah, definitely got to be like Austria, Russia, or something. Yeah. Right? No, it like, looks like it looks Russian. Yeah. You're right. We saw that writing on the on the on the side of the building. Yeah. So it's definitely some Russian stuff. Um, where is Russia? Not in. You were looking.
looking for Russia. He doesn't. Wiggy doesn't know where Russia is. <laughs> oh wow, Russia's huge. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, so where the fuck in Russia are we? Near a city. Go like near Moscow. Just go a little bit outside of Moscow, or something like that. Because it looked like it's like in a country rural place. I don't know where the fuck Moscow. Is. Yeah, just all my Russian followers are gonna be mad. <laughs> fuck it. We're going near Krasnyarsk. Uh, uh, oh, oh, and now you hold have on, to. We got seven seconds. And you have to. Oh, okay. They make you pay for it. Yeah, they make that, you. and that's how they get you. They have this fun game. One ninety nine a month, though. That's, no, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Oh well, look, we weren't too far. Uh, off. You were right, though. Moscow. I said Moscow. Should've see, been closer to Moscow. Yeah, I, I couldn't find Moscow. <laughs> of course, you couldn't find. It. What, what is going on? What is going on in the educational system in this country? There it is, what right happened? there. What's the next one? Let's do one more. One more. We'll do one more, and then we're done with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. This looks. Um, I'm gonna ah. say Paris. No, there's palm trees. So many palm trees. No, no, no. This is Florida. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. This is Florida. This is like near Miami. That's where that is. Yeah, it looks super Florida. Yeah, this is Miami. I say someplace near Miami. Miami Beach. Miami Beach. There's palm trees, and it's like a little dreary. Yeah. Yeah, let's put it near Miami. Boca Raton, maybe. I don't know. What's that right there? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. (laughs) Wow. We were way off. This is actually in Morocco. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who it knew that? It looked like Florida. You know, that's why I said I was going to say Paris or I was going to yeah. say someplace like that's why my initial thought was Europe. Well, it looks like my initial somewhere thought. like outside of the U.S., but Florida also kind of looks like yeah, that. Yeah, so. that, that kind of had like a, a vacation uh, country like a, like a vacation resort vibe. Yeah. It had a vacation resort vibe. But. Definitely. All right. Well, we did it. Uh, another episode of Riffin with Griffin. We're still working on the format. So all the people that had their complaints about stuff last week, you know, let me know what you think this week. If you Or if you have a suggestion of a game you want me to play or some things you want me to do, if you go, oh, yeah, keep looking at YouTube, uh, tw- TikTok videos. Maybe you like that. You know, We'll see uh, what goes on with that. Yeah, and, or send us send them stuff. Send oh, yeah, us stuff right. to look at. Send, and, send uh, stuff to look, look at and comment on. I like that idea. Real world advice and send stuff for that too. Right. So now we can start. I'm going to make an email. I'm going to make an email, a, a, a special email, and I'll have that for next week because normally I do it on Instagram where I do the real world, and I'm going to do that for next week. So next week we'll be doing that. And then we even uh, we have the ability to like you know have people call in. Uh, we might set that up where we have, you know, I'll, I'll have you on the screen and we can actually do some yip yapping with uh, some real riffing with Griffin fans, you know. So we're trying to do some more. Now I feel like I feel like I'm more adventurous because I got yeah. my sidekick here oh, to yeah. help me uh, take this podcast to the next level. Go across the world. Go across the world, right? Yeah. So listen. Griff coin to the moon. <laughs> that's that's Griff coin. Do we need to start Griff, Griff coin? coin. <laughs> yeah. That's Riff what I'm gonna coin? do. I'm gonna mint you a mint you a coin. Okay, well, that's well, what should it be called? Maybe do a contest for what it should be called. And if you have any art or anything like that, you st- and I still would accept music. You know, I remember I, people used to send me so much music in the past. I have a lot of great music from you guys, artists. So if you have some of that stuff, send that. Um, and remember, I game Eric Griffin Gaming. Make sure to check that out. Make sure you send me, uh, you know, fill out your comments and subscribe and like and make sure you, you know, hit the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button and keep coming back. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you next time.